Currently, companies are trying to implement SLMs in their organizations. SLMs are called as small language models. So why they are trying to implement SLMs? So now we are pretty much aware of LLM models, large language models. So something like ChatGPT, or we are using Claude models, or we are using Llama models, or we are using Google Gemini models. In this way, we got various LLM models. And in order to develop them, it is computationally heavy, as well as the budget-wise, we need to have a lot of budget around it. So that's where what companies are doing, they are trying to implement prompt engineering or they are trying to implement RAG architecture and they are able to achieve various customizations for their company specific activities. But now they are invoking an idea of using small language models. So what exactly a small language model is the size of a small language model going to range between one to 2 billion parameters approximately. And whereas a large language model size is going to be around 70 billion, 170 billion, or maybe around 405 billion. So very huge kind of models. So what exactly this SLMs and why companies are really using is, now small language models are a type of large language models itself, but with a significantly smaller size or the significantly smaller number of parameters within that particular model. And why or when to use SLMs and why companies are using, the first reason is smaller models adopt well to a domain specific task. For example, I want to customize my particular LLM model. I cannot build an LLM. So like for a company, for example, I'm working with a financial organization. Now they want to use their entire PDF files and they want to use it as a knowledge repository. Someone going to go back, they used to do some question and answering with respect to a financial documentation. So now what exactly we do? We try to take an LLM model. We try to do RAG architecture around it so that we are able to get it now. Still, what exactly RAG is, it is doing a control F kind of thing. It is doing the search similarity and it is understanding it and it is giving us a response. But if an LLM model can understand it well, that's going to be brilliant. That's where the companies are invoking SLM, small language model. So now I want to build a language model for a financial data at a lesser cost. SLMs is our option. And one more reason, so big companies are pushing L L SLM LMs to run efficiently, privately and cheaply. For example, now take, now you are trying to leverage your chat GPT. We are accessing with an API key and you are having your data, which is a very sensitive data of various clients, but still what going to happen? Now this data going to be recalled by your LLM model, but we never know. So even though we say, hey, the data is not consumed by chat GPT or OpenAI or anything, but yet company is going to have the doubt, hey, does it really going to consume our data or not? If you want to overcome that situation, I want my data to be private, yes. You are able to develop SLM models. And one more thing, cheap. Why exactly it is cheap is, now if you take LLM models, in order to uh, access them, they're going to be a charge for 1 million tokens. So if you are trying to write a prompt for 1 million tokens, or if you are able to get an output of 1 million tokens, they're going to charge certain amount of dollars. Now if the number of people are using it more, now you need to keep on paying that for your uh, lifetime you want to pay it. Now if you are able to build your own SLM model, I think you are trying to build one-time investment and you and it going to be in-house and it going to be cheaper as well you are investing for the first time and the rest of the time it going to be cheaper and some tasks for example if you are able to take um, Apple devices now what they are doing hey we don't want to take your data so they are installing SLM models within our Apple phones or within the devices or I want to install an L language model within a particular Arduino chipset or I want to install it within the Nvidia chipset so on the edge I want to install it then the best option going to be SLM small language models even if you are going with a robotics or a car I want to install it something in-house or on locally SLMs going to be the best option. And many SLMs are fine-tuned for very niche tasks. So as same, same thing like domain-specific tasks. So for a targeted means like and a cheaper and all this, we are able to do it. And when you need on-device, same thing. And uh, when privacy, yes, we discussed it. And when you want to reduce the compute or energy, yes, we need to go with SLMs. And again, latency. For example, when you are trying to go with your language models, so like the data going to be on the cloud, so like, or the LLM model going to be on the cloud interface, whenever you ask a prompt, it need to go to the cloud, we need to interact with it, it need to come back. They're going to be a bit of latency. If you want to really reduce the latency, then we can go with SLM, small language models. And examples of small language models, Models, I think which we are already aware of it. So which is called as GPT uh, mini 
or we are able to call it as GPT-4 O Mini, we have it. So now the bigger version of GPT is 4 O basically and the smaller version is 4 O Mini. Now if anyone want to have a cheaper costing, people use Mini. But the accuracy or the performance of Mini may not be that brilliant as your chat GPT-4, but for certain activities we can, but cost wise it is less. So now we're going to have around 1 to 2 billion parameters as we said, or we have tiny Llama models, or we got Google Gamma models, any of this comes into the concept of your SLM, small language models. And what are the characteristics of any SLM? So it need to be compact size, it need to be lesser. And it need to be, we need to do efficient fine tuning for a smaller mo models adopt well. So to the smaller activities or the domain specific activities. So we are able to achieve a better fine tuning instead of fine tuning a big language model. If you are able to fine tune a smaller language model, it's going to have a better performance. And again, uh, for as I said, like earlier, for a domain specific task game. And smaller context window compared to massive LLM. So now this is a disadvantage. Now what exactly happening? So small language models, obviously smaller architecture, going to handle smaller data. So when it is able to handle smaller data, it can handle a smaller context window. When it is handling smaller context window, the ability to understand, to generalize going to be less for a small language model. So when compared to a large language model. For that, what exactly we are doing is there are two different approaches. In order to reduce the size of the model, we have distillation approach and we got quantization approach. What exactly a distillation approach going to do is we call it as teacher-student approach in simple. So now what exactly this teacher-student approach is? Teacher going to be a big model. Now you are trying to ask a question for a bigger model or we call it teacher model. It is giving one set of response. And we have a smaller size model we are trying to ask a response to a smaller model. It is giving another response. So now what exactly we are doing, the response we are generating from a teacher model is more like your Y actual. So this concept is more of your technical side of it. And student answers which we are getting it from a smaller model going to be Y predicted. Between this teacher model answers, between this student model answers, we are trying to perform a loss function. We are trying to add a loss function. So the goal is we want to minimize the loss between the answers we are getting it from a teacher model and the answers we are getting it from a student model so that the student model is trying to mimic the behavior of a teacher model so that we may get a better performance. That's what the concept of the distillation is. So that's what the loss function here is. You are training a smaller model. So what we call it a student model to mimic a larger trainer teacher model. So this is the loss function until we minimize the loss function. So like you are trying to retrain this particular approach so that the student performance going to map to your teacher performance, but it may lack at a context. So it's still, I think it may not be great at accuracy, but still manageable. So we call it as distillation approach. So from this, you are able to achieve small language models at a performance of a large language model, we are able to achieve. Another one going to be quantization. What is a quantization is, now you are having weight values. So now if you are saying 70 billion, there are 70 billion weight parameters, or there are 405 billion weight parameters. Now, if you are trying to go with 32 bit, for example, float character, so something like this, so like 3.1415. So if there are more decimal values, higher precision, what going to happen? So in order to store this information, your Python programming or anything, going to take four bytes of memory to store that particular value. Just imagine this kind of high precision values are around, maybe around the 70 billion or 170 billion, so that going to consume a lot of memory. If I'm able to reduce the precision level to a lower precision level, instead of saying it as 3.14, if I round it off to directly 3, so now we are getting 8-bit integer, and in order to store this, they're going to consume only one byte of memory. So this is another approach. So what they're doing in a quantization, they are trying to convert a high precision values to a lower precision values so that the size of your model can be reduced. So they are trying to use distillation approach, and they are using quantization approach to reduce the size of your model. So this is what they are doing it. And in order to build, for example, I want to build an SLM. So what exactly we do? We follow the same regular LLM architecture, but a less amount of parameters. We will be, in order to build SLMs, 
we use the same concept of transformer architecture which we have it in LLMs as well. Now a transformer contains a basic transformer block. So it's going to be input embedding, positional encoding, we're going to have self-attention layer to understand the context of each word with rest. So each word communicates with another word to understand the overall context of a particular sentence, self-attention layer. So again, your feed forward layer, layer normalization in this way, these are the basic concepts. And then we got optimizers like Adam optimizer, Adam W optimizer, LAMB optimizer, ARDA factor optimizer. In this way, we have it. And we got loss functions, we use cross entropy. So within the cross entropy, we have varying uh, formulas within the cross entropy in order to adopt to your uh, language models. And basically, SLMs or LLMs falls into a category of self-supervised learning within the machine learning. And then we got activation functions like ReLU, GLU, ReLU, Softmax. So GLU stands for Gaussian Error Linear Unit. And ReLU stands for Rectified Linear Unit. In this way, like we will be using this basic architecture to build an SLM. And it's same. So like SLMs are more like developing your regular neural networks through Python or PyTorch, TensorFlow, something you are trying to develop them. So in case of your planning, for the future, maybe 2026 is more of SLMs. If anyone are interested, try to explore this topic of SLMs. So understand the transformer research paper. So like if you are able to understand how the transformers are working, this is transformer research paper. If you are able to understand, this is released in 2017. If you understand this, you are able to get this particular topic. And again, in order to understand your SLMs, you can understand even the concepts of scaling law. There is another research paper, scaling law, from OpenAI. So when to scale the particular model? For example, now your model is at uh, 1 billion parameters. You want to scale it to 10 billion parameters. Now, how much loss we are able to reduce? The loss is called as the difference between the actual and the predicted, we call it as loss. How much loss we are reducing? The loss is comparatively very low, we are reducing it. Very minor difference we are able to reduce. There is no point in scaling it. Why? When you scale it, the computation increases, the data need to be increased, but still there is no particular accuracy, there is no trade-off around it. That's where like we don't scale it. Again, if I'm dropping, if I'm descaling it, again, the accuracy should not drop. The loss value you need to be least value itself. For example, for a bigger model, the loss is this much. When you are scaling down, still the loss should not have a drastical drop. Still, there need to be lesser drop in the loss, but still, we are able to achieve a smaller size model. That's what we are having in lines of your scaling law. So try to read even the research paper of scaling law and transformer architecture to understand SLMs better, and then code them using TensorFlow, PyTorch, or JAX library, they're going to help you out. I hope you got a clear understanding about what are SLMs, small language models. So small language language models are highly preferred by industries where their data is very sensitive and where they have a network or where they have an access to the good AI developers or AI engineers, they can start developing SLMs in-house, which they are cheap as well as efficient, as well as they're going to be at a low latency and they are very good for a small context window and they're very good for a particular niche areas within the domain. So for that, we are able to use SLM, small language models. Any doubts, please share your doubts in the comment section. I may just see them and I can just reply back to them. Thank you.